Good morning. It's December 27th, uh, two days after the holidays, and we're trying to get ourselves back in a good fat burn. I know a lot of people out there just had wonderful tiny holidays, and they're trying to figure out like, oh, you know, like what kind of plan should I pick uh, to try to get a little bit healthier in January, right? Lots of us have New Year's resolutions to get healthier in January. Um, so I thought I might spend today going a little bit more in detail about what my day normally looks like. Um, so this is how I normally start. I got a Nutribullet blender. I put a little bit of ice in it. I'm just gonna cover the ice with some coffee I made yesterday. This happens to be coconut coffee because I love flavored coffee. So you just cover the ice. And then you put the mocha shake pack that I get from my Optavia program right on that. And we're gonna blend this up. All right, once it's blended up, it looks like this. This doesn't count as anything but a fueling, right? On the five and one, you can have five fuelings and one lean and green. So one meal that is primarily protein and vegetables. Um, a lot of times people add a bunch of stuff to their fuelings and then that counts as condiments and snacks. But if you just add coffee and ice, it just counts as a straight up fueling. Mm. And it's delicious. It's a delicious way to start your day. I'm gonna drink this. Also uh, on my program, we drink half our body weight in ounces. Um, a minimum of 64 ounces of water a day. So to make that happen, I fill two of these 24 ounce cups with water every morning. I take this one with me into the office. And I leave the other one on the counter back there. Anytime I come in here to get coffee or, you know, just get out of the office, I'll drink some water. <clears throat> and by the end of the day, I normally get my 100 ounces, which is good. The body needs the water to stay hydrated, help with your metabolism, flush all of the junk food that you ate over the holidays out of the body. So that is normally how we start our day. Uh, we get to eat uh, five fuelings a day and one lean and green, and we eat every two and a half to three hours. So I'll see you back here in two and a half hours. We'll have fueling two. All right, so fueling two, it's freezing here in Massachusetts. I feel like that's gonna be what you hear out of my mouth for the next three months, sorry. All right, so I just made the uh, cinnamon brown sugar oatmeal. I think that's right, or maple, maple brown sugar. That's probably right. Um, it's a, a little soupy. It's good, but it's not great. but it's hearty and it's gonna keep me warm and full for the next two and a half hours. So I'm gonna enjoy this. And then um, we're gonna have chili for lunch. So in two and a half hours, we'll have chili. And with a lot of the pastas and the chili, they take a lot longer to soften up than the package says. So I added the water to the chili when I made the oatmeal. I threw that in my microwave so the boiling water will start to soften up the beans in the chili. And then in two and a half hours, we'll microwave that for a minute and that will make perfect chili. Okay, so if any of you are on program, uh, some of those fuelings are tricky. The, the pasta stays a little crunchy and the beans stay a little hard. Uh, but if you put the water in them when you make your before fueling and then you let them sit in that water for two hours, they turn out much, much better. So that's my my other tip to you. All right, well, I'm gonna enjoy my oatmeal. I don't really have much going on today, which is not, not too bad of a problem to have either, but I don't know, we'll make some plans, see what's going on this week, and uh, I'll see you back here in a couple hours for Fueling 3. All right, time for Fueling 3. It's about two o'clock, so we hydrated the chili a while ago um, and we just nuked it so it's nice and hot. I am going to enjoy my chili 
And then I'm going to make myself go outside and just get a couple of steps in, a little habit of motion, nothing, nothing crazy, but I'm going to go out and get my walk in. Then we'll figure out what we're going to do for the lean and green, uh, which, uh, yeah, should be coming up right about five o'clock. So we'll figure out what's for dinner. Um, easy peasy. All right. Let's see how the chili came out. Pretty good. I'm telling you, if you let it sit long enough, it's delicious. If you just follow the directions on the package, it's not delicious. So if you tried it the way it said and you hate it, try it again. Let it sit for a little while. It is actually very good. All right. I'll see you for the leaning green. Okay. I did manage to get outside and brave the cold weather here. Just get in a couple of little steps. <sighs> you know. You just can't sit in the house all day. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna finish up this walk and figure out dinner. Ooh, all right, time for the lean and green. This is one of the easiest ones I do. So I just always have a bag of frozen shrimp in the, fr the freezer and frozen cauliflower rice, okay? So I'm gonna measure out seven ounces of the shrimp and defrost that in the sink or eight ounces because it's seven cooked ounces that I get of shrimp because shrimp's a lean est. And I'm going to microwave this bag of cauliflower rice and we're going to do like a shrimp stir fry rice bowl and it'll be done in like, I don't know, it takes about 10 minutes to defrost the shrimp sometimes so that can be the longest part of the cooking. Here. Right. So you just put your shrimp into the colander and then you just run water over it for like 10 minutes. We're just gonna heat up this pan here. When that gets hot, we're gonna put this shrimp in there. We sprinkle them with a little bit of taco seasoning and we just microwave the rice for about four minutes and we'll throw that in the pan once the shrimp turn pink. The beautiful thing about shrimp, it takes them about three minutes on both sides to be done. So dinner should be done in about six minutes. I love this deep meal. 20 minutes later, you got shrimp and cauliflower stir fry. Looks delicious. All right, here it is, all done. It's delicious. This is the easiest go-to lean and green I got. A bag of frozen cauliflower rice and some frozen shrimp. All right, I'm gonna enjoy my lean and green. I'm gonna go watch some TV. I'll see you back here in a little bit for first dessert. All right, we're going to make our first dessert and our second dessert. This is my favorite thing when the day goes just right. So I never use these to microwave any of the fuelings. So I like to make the peanut, uh, the peanut butter cup out of the brownie fueling and use two of these so that it looks like I get two peanut butter cups. So I'm just gonna take the decadent chocolate brownie and put it in a bowl. I'm gonna add just a fourth of a cup of water, mix it up, get water. Okay, one fourth cup of water. You can use decaf coffee if, you, if you've got some uh, that's like cold in the fridge. Okay, then we just mix this up. Okay, so this will be the chocolatey part of our peanut butter cup. So I'm just gonna put half of this into each of these little paper bowls. You don't have to spray them or anything. It'll pop right out. Or I just like to eat them with a spoon, actually. You can pop them out and eat them like real candy, but. All right, and then I use a scraper to make sure I get all of the fuelings. These little mini scrapers were key to success when I started the program because, you know, all of the bits of the fueling are kind of a big deal. So you want to make sure you get all that you can. All right, then you get your PB2. Two tablespoons of this counts as one optional snack. Okay, so I'm going to measure out two tablespoons. And now the key to this, there's no wrong way to do it, but I like to just barely hydrate the peanut butter so it stays nice and thick, kind of like peanut butter cup peanut butter. So we're just gonna add a teeny amount of water. So this I just kind of do by eyeball. 
you just kind of mix it up and if it doesn't all mix and you add a little bit more but I like it thicker than runnier because then it just kind of blends with the chocolate brownie and that's not really what we're looking for this may be a little too dry let's see yeah we're going to add just a little bit more water to this it's almost there um but I think we just need a teeny bit more So then once you get this mixed up, you just split the, the, the peanut butter mix. Oh, you know, I added too much, too much water, of course. And you just mix this and then you split it between the two and try to bury it in the middle like a peanut butter cup. And this will count, both of these will be one fueling and one full snack, which is awesome. All right, so split it in half and then just plop it in to the bowl. You can't see what I'm doing. This is awesome. All right. Mm. All right, so you split the peanut butter in half and then you just scrape it out. It's about half the peanut butter. Plop it into the cup with the brownie. Lick your fingers. And then just kind of hide it under the brownie batter. And it doesn't have to be perfect because it never will be, but that's okay. All right, and when you're all done, you make a mess. Kind of looks like this. And we're just gonna pop that into the freezer and give it about 45 minutes. You can leave it in there for as long as you like, um, but in about 45 minutes is how I think it comes out perfect. All right, once you get all the peanut butter out of the bowl, then I just use the same bowl to mix the pudding in because the pudding tastes better the longer that sits in the fridge. So I'm gonna mix that up with, this is just some vanilla decaffeinated coffee I had in the fridge. So you just make it like the package says, it's a half a cup of liquid. So instead of water, I just put the decaf coffee in the bowl. Okay, beautiful. And then we just add the envelope of chocolate fudge pudding. This is my, probably my favorite too. The brownie is good, the peanut butter cup candy is amazing, but the pudding, I don't know. It just tastes like regular pudding. There's no like, there's no imagination needed. The key to the pudding, once you get it in the bowl, is to whisk it. This took me a long time. I wasn't a big kitchen gadget person and now I got little mini scrapers and whisks, right? To get the pudding, not lumpy and kind of weird, you gotta whisk it up. Once you've whisked this all up, kind of get it off the sides. That drives me nuts when it's all over the sides. You just plop this in the fridge and in four hours, this will be delicious pudding. All right, so we've made all the desserts. We just gotta let them set up and we'll be back here to eat our first dessert in about a half an hour. All right, it is time for first dessert. Here we go, they just kind of get a little bit solidified. The longer you keep them in there, the more of a solid they would be. So if you leave them in there for like an hour, you can actually pick them up with your hand, hold them. They look just like peanut butter cups. Mm. That is so delicious. All right, I'm gonna enjoy my first dessert and watch a movie. I'll see you back here in a couple hours for second dessert. All right, this is the end of our Lazy Sunday. We have our pudding for final dessert. We mixed it up with the decaf vanilla. Let it sit in the fridge. Mmm. It's so good, it's thick, chocolatey. Got little hints of vanilla from the coffee. It is perfect. All right, I'm gonna enjoy my dessert. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel. If you're looking for a health coach and you're ready to start your health journey for this January, send me an email at iemahoney at yahoo.com. I'd love to help you get started or maybe one of your friends and family if you're already on the program. All right, I will see you tomorrow.